Hi, this is Calvin Cox. Um, it is Sunday night, 9.48 p.m. It's Sunday, April 20. The year is 2014. I'm feeling a lot better, finally. I took off work early Friday. I really was not feeling very good. Very tired. I've had nasty sinus infection. I came over to a friend's place. I've been in bed basically Friday, all day, the remainder of the day Friday, Saturday, and at least half the day today. I only got up to uh, make something to eat, drink some, you know, hot fluids to help drain, have my devotional, and uh, maybe a shower, whatever, go back to bed. So now I'm finally feeling a little better, and work it's work day again tomorrow. But I would like this, what this talk is about, you know, nothing, the hard things in life that you do are what really build cities and plans and structures of financing and money and progress and modernization. The difficult, difficult path, the difficult path yields much more than just turning around and walking back and, oh, I can't do it, okay? <laughs> the easy path, typically speaking, in the long run yields, well, nothing. The hard path, you have, the reason it's hard, you have to think your way through every turn of it as you go. But, in the long run, it always yields much, much more. One of the richest men in the whole world who has, I think, the most patents of anybody, he says, always do everything the hard way. Because you learn so much more in the long run, it's so much more valuable. And it's very true. Imagine if uh, Columbus, you know, at the beginning of his voyage where, you know, America was discovered, that the mast had broken on the ship and Columbus had said, oh, well, we're not going to go because, well, the mast broke, okay, and we quit. Okay. Well, America would never been discovered, you know? <laughs> Suppose uh, Apollo 13, when they were, you know, having to go around, slingshot around the moon and come back to Earth. Suppose they just, oh, we can't do it, and they quit. You know, of course, they all would have died. You know, suppose there's so many things. I mean, suppose Henry Ford had said, ah, oh, this isn't worth it, forget it, I'll go make tennis shoes. You know, I mean, we would never had Ford automobiles, and we would never had uh, his magnificent understanding of the assembly line and how doing the same function, the same job over and over and over again allows a person to do 10 times more production maybe 20 times more production than, you know, one person assembling a whole car from, uh, you know, each little step. And it's a lot to that, as it is. That discussion is a whole other thing, but anyway. So, the point being is that the United States of America, the day that it closed its space shuttle program, was a very serious day indeed, and it was a chapter towards closing the door for the future of America. And uh, manless probing of our solar system and beyond is a bad idea. We're removing mankind out of the equation of space exploration, and one of the future things that needs to occur is the mining of minerals and metals from space because we're running out of them here on Earth. Uh, in Africa, their countries around the world are fighting to get their hands to the property rights of certain countries in Africa because Africa is rich in precious minerals and metals. Uh, the, the minerals we need, certain ones for the semiconductor industry, computer industry, they're rich in, um, in Africa. And the Chinese and the Americans and all the other countries who are use these metals are trying to get their hands on it any way they can. 
And um, of course, that's naturally going to occur because of need, but on the bigger picture, there is millions of asteroids, literally. Uh, I looked on it on the internet. I typed in, um, let me see right here. I typed in As I typed in asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars and it's called the main belt. The reason the asteroid belt between Jupiter and, Mo Jupiter and Mars is called the main M-A-I-N belt is to differentiate it from the Cooper belt and the Cooper belt is out, plas out past the Neptune. And so the main belt, the one being between Mars and Jupiter, uh, has literally millions of asteroids. And they're everything from mainly carbonous to metal to mineral um, to just rocks. Um, there's a lot of money and well-being out in that asteroid belt, belt between Mars and Jupiter. The only problem is, you know, um, the question is not just, gee, could, can we get some guys and put them on this spacecraft and send them out in that asteroid belt and identify um, the composition of certain asteroids and then of course they would have to attach some method motor to at the proper point as these asteroids circled around they would have to calculate how much energy uh, it would need to blast this thing in a trajectory towards Earth and then somewhere along the way we would have to have other spaceships meet it and bring it on into a safe orbit or break it apart in outer space and bring it down in chunks. Um, okay, yeah, we could do that. Okay, it would take a long time to build spaceships to do it, but we could do it. Do we need to do it? Yes, we need to do it because we're running out of these precious minerals. They're, they're necessary for industry and the well-being of not just the United States, but every other industrialized country in the world to continue to move forward. We have to have them. It's, it's not as, you know, it's just something you have to do. So then also the whole idea being as you're developing the spaceship and traveling out to Mars into that main belt, asteroid main belt, uh, and doing all this, you're also going to be developing the systems for further uh, space travel of mankind. Just having robotic missions go into the solar system and to retrieve asteroids and stuff like that, the unfortunate part of doing that, it leaves mankind out of the picture. And it allows basically um, it lessens people people's self-value, their their own worth is what they see themselves as. And I think that that actually is damaging and, and da very damaging in an overall sense and it should not be allowed. Um, the spacecraft that you would have to design to go out and travel to the main belt, uh, I don't believe you would want to be anything like um, the International Space Station. And uh, my feeling is that NASA, of course, would need to be involved in building such a, such a spaceship. But um, my feeling is it would be really cool if NASA would, would design such a thing 
in a, a survivable um, something uh, uh, how do you say it something along the lines of a framework that would be something that would be used over and over and over again as a basis for in other words like a chassis a proven chassis that you plug new components into all the time which the chassis of course would be the basic spacecraft design okay the international the problem with the international space station is that it's like this long attached arms and everything that basically I don't believe could withstand the pressure of acceleration and deceleration or as much as that would be necessary to go out of Earth orbit and re-enter another orbit or you know orbit around Mars or just go around the main belt. I don't think that the International Space Station perhaps was designed to handle that. Um, and so um, also one of the problems with space travel is and it's a big problem is if you if you are not in a gravity uh, situation even if it's low gravity even if it's only a quarter or half of what Earth's gravity is currently your body begins to um, lose muscle mass and calcium problems with calcium uh, distribution in your body uh, start your um, bones uh, get um, I'm not going to say severely brittleized but your bones you know your bones your body is designed so that you have uh, what you call blood calcium level and on earth when you work out you know you're walking or you're exercising that pounding action it builds bone I think what occurs don't quote me on this is that calcium comes out of the blood and deposits in the bones and the bones are like always also giving back a certain amount of calcium so the calcium level in your blood also affects your heart function and so it's a very necessary balance also one thing is is that vitamin D uh, is necessary for people to feel good and not to be, be depressed if you do not have a correct amount of vitamin D you could get very depressed so uh, a lot of planning and certain things need to be done the Inter International Space Station was not, as far as I know, was not designed in a way to inherently overcome those problems. To have a way and a method for uh, astronauts to physically exercise sufficiently, not only for their mental well-being, but to keep their uh, blood calcium levels correct and... Um, also, spaceship would have to have, I don't know if the shuttle has this, would have to have a light source of the proper frequency that uh, each astronaut could basically go into what would be like a suntan booth and have this light shine on them so that it would produce vitamin D in your skin. And that's how vitamin D is produced. Is it sunlight, natural sunlight hitting your skin uh, it interacts with, I don't know what it is in there, but it produces, in your skin, produces vitamin D. And then that goes into your bloodstream and helps control your your mood, your psychological balance also. So, there are ways to design a, a spaceship, uh, I believe, that would be uh, workable and would allow people to perform more functions. And it would need to be of sufficient size so that um, people could go to private areas and have their privacy. And it would be kind of like public areas uh, where you could congregate for meetings and eat and stuff like that. In other words, it would be more livable. There's a, there's a certain calculation that has to do with, quotes, survivability of long-term space travel 
due to X number of cubic feet per person for the whole spaceship. If you designed a capsule just 10 feet long and about 7 feet wide and you crammed however many people into it necessary for a mission to go all the way out to the main belt past Mars and survey for asteroids that we wanted to bring back to Earth and then them come back, the truth is the mission would never survive because the people would basically kill each other. They would all go nuts on each other because you just can't put that many people together in that close of proximity and have them stay normal. Nobody would. It's totally crazy. You just can't do it. It's not survivable. So you need a spaceship that's big enough and roomy enough and has places that people can go to their own quarters or, you know, share quarters. But at some point in the day, people can get away from each other and have enough space and read and meditate, sing, whatever, do their own little thing. And, you know... Uh, so mentally, people can survive such a long journey out and back, perform the task they were meant to, and then come back. So, um, also one of the benefits of a certain design of a spaceship using what's called centrifugal force, okay, which is when you spin a body, it tends to have more mass to it, and it moves out, so it kind of creates its own microgravity, so to speak. Or not quite what Earth would be, but um, it creates some gravity. Now, that's important, because that little amount of gravity, a couple of very interesting things occur again. Toilets work, okay? Showers work, like they do on Earth. Uh, Everything has a tendency to go down in one direction, which means, of course, it doesn't all float around constantly in your face. So it doesn't contaminate everything. It doesn't uh, create massive problems. So there's a lot of benefits to it, and it would make cleaning easier. All the crud, you know, body hair and dandruff and water from showering and you know uh, when people go to the bathroom if it all pulls down of course you know uh, you could have a space toilet that works more like one on earth that would be a big improvement um, and better air handling systems that control the odor they say that on the International Space Station it, is, it smells disgusting it takes a couple of weeks to get acclimated to the odor so that your mind shuts off that there is odor in the International Space Station. And that's due to, you know, a lot of reasons. You need improved air filtration systems, which uh, increase the weight. Uh, there's a lot of things that would need to be done for a different type of space station, but I believe it can be done. Heck, think about it. Um, didn't we make the International Space Station? Of course we did. Um, so, it's it's something in the future that's right around the corner. It needs to be done for industry and everything on Earth here to survive and do better. You need access to those minerals. And you need to hone your skills at building newer and better uh, spacecraft that also, that from there we can continue to explore planets further out and eventually, a hundred years in the future, leave our, uh, leave our solar system to go exploring way beyond things.